Okay, guys, so I don't know um, how I'm going to do this. I had a camera. Um, I bought it new from Amazon. It turned out that it had been used before. Um, I've been using it to make videos, and this morning it just kaputzed on me. I think I've had it for maybe two weeks. So I'm back to using my phone, um, and we'll ju I'm just going to go over what we've been doing if I can't get the videos from that camera to upload. So while I was using the camera, we started on our bag. Um, I don't, I, I can't recreate what I've done. Maybe I'll be able to upload those videos. I'm not sure. Um, it is a front piece with a pocket that you stitch. It's a folded pocket. So you got a folded piece of fabric, raw edges, and then you stitch. Same thing on the back. The pattern pieces and the pattern itself do not call for a, um, this is actually the front, do not call for a pocket on both sides, but I thought, what the heck, why not? So I just added um, a pocket to both sides. Um, the straps, I had to make straps from fabric that I had and then I also had to make a piece. This little bee print is my favorite. I mean, the faces on these bees is, they're so adorable. So anyway, and I, I just have a rolled up towel in here to kind of give it some shape and body. Um, I mean, I used Insulbrite on the, which is a type of interfacing that has a, um, a metallic liner that keeps... It's like what they use in pot holders and lunch boxes that are made from fabric. Um, it's washable. You can um, put things in your bag that like a, you know, a can of soda, your lunch, whatever. Um, it will help things stay cool or warm. Um, this is the, the, the length right here on the straps is what was required on the pattern. But I've made this before, and you can either lengthen these or shorten them for your preference. And then, of course, the side. I think I, I talked about that before. Um, and that's what I'm working on right now. So the lining is the same two pieces. And I've put just warm and natural interfacing, fusible interfacing. And the pocket is a little bit different. You cut out four pieces in this shape. And I decided instead of um, having the two matching pieces be a pocket, I sewed one of the blue um, honey beehives to the bees and put that on the honeycomb print lining. And then the same thing, obviously, I've got the honeycomb and then the little bees on the stylized flower daisy print. And that is our lining. So now I'm having to make that side piece, which for us in this McCall's pattern, which I will review again real quick since I don't know with my camera issues, it is the McCall's Fashion Accessories K-Mitt Design um, M5822. And it has a small, a medium, and a large, and we're doing the medium size bag. Um, I think small would be good for, you know, maybe carrying around town. Um, just for like wallet and keys. Maybe if you're going to the library or something. Or, I don't know, actually that would be great for the library right there. The medium just seems to fit everybody. And then the large would be great for like the beach, a picnic, an overnight. Um, I mean, I literally, in the medium size bag, I have a rolled up bath towel. That's a lot of space in just a medium bag. So anyway, that's what that is. And here is our piece number 11, which is the side. And what I need to do, because I don't have a full piece of fabric, that I can cut this out on is I need to cut out two and then I'm going to stitch, you know, make a seam there like I did on the main bag. And that will give us the interior lining side. And I can see that I did not get this. I 
think I'm going to have to go, I either need to, to just get a book on um, how to do videos for, you know, for YouTube, for business, or I need to um, go talk to someone, maybe at Ken's camera, and try to figure out, you know, what it is I'm not doing correctly. I have... Um, Some pretty uh, kind of intermediate skills with electronic things, and I've really never had a hard time figuring it out. I mean, literally, I've basically taught myself almost everything on the computer. Um, so I thought that doing this would be maybe not intuitive, maybe I would have to do some research and kind of figure it out. But this is just not hitting my head right, and um, asking for help has proven to be fruitless. So I'm, I'm on this journey by myself, and I'm hoping that as I go along and I learn things, I will be able to share those, because trying to find information online is, at, at best, it's infuriating. And at worst, it's impossible. I, I, it's like there's some kind of a secret keeping cabal that, you know, don't don't share this information. So I, I don't really understand why. Um, I think we would all benefit from some type of knowledge. And so, I plan when I get it all figured out, um, to share it. That's my plan. All right, so now I'm just gonna stitch this across here, but I kinda wanna make sure that that's going to be on the bottom of the bag, not up on the side. So I'm going to give myself a little overlap there and then take my pattern piece, lay it down so that that's pretty much in the middle and then I'm going to cut, I don't know, just a little bit off of this end. And then come over here and cut a little bit. But I'm leaving myself plenty of room just to be safe. Okay, so now I'm going to go stitch this together, right sides together. And then I'm going to come back and we'll press it out and move on. I really want to get this done. Um, today is Thursday, and this coming Sunday is Easter 2019. And I'd like to give this to my daughter um, when I see her on Easter. have to do for this piece before we move on is stay stitch. It's not the next thing we do, however, because we're working on the lining. We're going to also be working on that top, the part that closes the bag. So I can go ahead and do the um, stay stitch, not top stitch. I can do the stay stitch um, as I go um, right now, or I can um, hold off on that and move with the next step, which is to turn in the seam allowance on the ends and lower edge of each top section and in our case that's number 14 right there so I'm going to hold off on this I don't want to get sidetracked in case something happens oh I do know something I need to do a little bit of maintenance here um, I've got this wild and hairy pin situation going on it's funny because I knew 
yesterday I was thinking I'm going to have some type of technical issue with this camera. I don't know what made me think that I would, but sure enough, I did. So with two dead batteries and um, the actual cord plugged in, it, it's just dying on me. I don't think that's, I don't think that's me. I think that's the camera. And it could potentially be why it was a refurb resell. I don't know. Oops, where'd that go? Hmm. That's really strange. Anyway, so I've been using this little piece of fabric to uh, stick my pins in because I've been trying to hurry and sew, get things moving on that project um, since I wanted to give it to her. I think we're supposed to get together at some point Sunday for Easter dinner or something. I'd love to give it to her. It's been kind of a in the works project for quite some time. I think you know how that goes with your own kids and family members when you're sewing. They all kind of back up a little bit. I found, I'm going through my, um, my house, getting it ready, kind of minimalizing, getting things ready to move and, you know, get this house sold eventually and get myself back to Alabama. And, um, there it is. I, uh, found my smocking plates, um, just randomly yesterday. I thought that I had accidentally thrown them away years ago and lo and behold, they just appeared and through the process of clearing out. So I'm going to do a video on those and how I store them. We'll talk about that later. That sounds kind of funny now that I think about it. Okay, so I'm going to remove the pins from the pattern piece here. I do have some markings I wanna make. I will be using my friction pin. And basically what those are, are these little dots in the corner here. So I've got one and there's all four corners have a dot, two, there's three. And I'm just, you know, kind of folding back halfway through the circle and then taking my friction pin and marking where that halfway point is to get the full mark. Now there is a fold line um, and I believe that has to do with our uh, zipper. Let me separate these so I can mark this one as well. And I think I will go ahead and put some fusible interfacing if I have enough. I have several different types, but I need the top to be a little sturdy. Sometimes if you can't, if you don't have fusible interfacing, you can just insert a piece of heavy fabric between the two um, outer fabrics, like a uh, piece of denim. That will be helpful. Okay, so I've got all four of those corners marked. And my next step here is, it looks like the fusible interfacing has already been added. Top section and press on both. Yep, both. I need to look at this real quick. I want to make sure. Each matching fabric. So yes, okay. So with that note, I don't want to burn myself. So I need to be very careful over here while I look for some Okay. 
I don't need it to be a fleece. I need it to just be um, a type of interfacing that's good and firm, but not fluffy. This is just your basic everyday fusible interfacing. We'll give a little bit of body to the top. <clears throat> and obviously I need two. So that's what I'm going to do. Piece 14, pin that down. I have um, my bread, I make bread like every other day. And I've got two loaves rising in the oven, so I'm going to have to run, um, take those out and preheat the oven in just a moment. I'll leave this here. I've had a couple people ask me why I work on such a small area. Um, I got used to it when I was teaching classes. And um, it actually has served me well because in order to use my large cutting area, um, I would have to go all the way through the house and down a step, just one, and then come back up that step through the house and back here. Well, I, ha I hurt myself. Um, when I was in Alabama for 10 weeks, 10 months, and it has, um, it's been a long journey trying to get myself healed to the point where I can just walk, sometimes just standing up or just getting into my truck, um, is, it, it's just impossible, um, I long for the day when I can just you know, take my puppy for a walk. That would be so nice. Okay, so what I just did is I cut it, I cut this down. Um, I'm going to cut it down a little bit more on the long side because I don't want to have to fold that under for that, uh, that step that is saying to, you know, fold under the seam allowance and, and press. I don't want all this bulk. So I'm kind of cutting this outside that line. Then the main portion of the of the interfacing needs to be in the center. Um, and that's to give stability to the zipper. Okay, so there's that done. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna cut this piece of interfacing down to stay outside my seam allowance lines. And sometimes, you know, if you if you get a little crazy and you cut too much, um, you can just piece it. You can put, you know, these little pieces back where they need to go and press them down and they're there for basically the duration of the, you know, the life of the item you're making. So it doesn't have to be um, one solid piece. You can use your iron and just kind of piece the requirement. See, it kind of went wonky there. It's This fold is kind of making me a little crazy. All right. That might be 
Yep, I think we're okay. Well, no. It's just a little bit too much on one end. It's so crooked from this fold. Arr. But if you press it, you know, it's, it's stuck. So this would be where if you had access to your... Um, your Omni grid and a um, rotary cutter. That would really work a lot better than a pair of scissors. But I can deal with the fiddlies. It doesn't bother me. Okay. So there we go. It's a little wonky, but nobody's ever going to see that. Okay. So I will be right back. I've just got to go take the bread out, preheat the oven, and I'll be back. All right, so the oven is preheating. Um, I'm, I was, I'm pleased to see that my bread is behaving itself. It was being shaggy this morning, and I thought when I was, I mean, it rose beautifully, but um, when I was kneading it, it had a, a tendency to be a little shaggy, and I don't like shaggy bread dough. I'm just dealt with that enough. I don't need to continue to deal with it. Oh, here I am. I'm looking for this right here. Okay, so on the lower edge. So I do need my pattern, and I just realized that by putting my um, interfacing on, I've lost all my dots. So I'll just have to kind of be aware of what I'm doing. All right, so this is the lower edge. Um, if my bees are this way... Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one side like this, and then I'm going to fold it up along that bottom edge like this. This is kind of one of those projects where you need to be mindful and careful of your fingers because you're using the iron a lot, and you can get hurt. Okay, and then... A little crooked so I'm going to take a pin oops and come in here and kind of push it where I want it and then hit it with that again just to, yeah okay that's nice and then fold in the other side and that way this end is encasing that, and this end is encasing this. It's You don't have to do it that way. But that's the way I do it. Okay. So that's what we end up with, and we're going to do that on both pieces. So let's see. That would be the lower edge. So I'll start over here. And I'm eyeballing the seam allowance. I kind of have it down... Um, you can mark it. It's on the pattern. You can use a ruler, um, a marking pen, your sewing machine um, throat plate will often have a, a 5 8 inch. So you can use that to uh, start your measurement and then just continue marking whatever works. Use the tools you have. And eventually you'll get to the point, like, you know, like a lot of quilters just automatically know what a quarter inch seam allowance is. Um, a lot of garment and um, projects, uh, stitchers, just can eyeball five eighths perfectly. They've been doing it for so long. Okay, so we have those two done. I can move this out of the way, I think. I might need it again. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a zipper and we're going to whip stitch across the zipper teeth 
and we're going oh because they want us to um, for size it says right here on the pattern for size medium to shorten the zipper whip stitch across the zipper teeth two inches above the lower zipper stop and they're showing that right there trim the zipper below the new zipper stop so on the pattern <coughs> excuse me it says that you are going to need a 12 inch zipper for both medium and large bag. Now I don't know if I have a 12 inch zipper. <laughs> I might have a lace zipper. That installation is a little bit different. And I really just don't see a zipper in this bag that I want to use with this particular fabric. So I'm going to go through my lace zippers and see what I have. I believe I have a yellow one. Yep. I sure do. Oh, come on, let go. Thank you. And I think they were 10 inches. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, well. I might be able to just use this zipper. I also have black, and I'm trying to decide thought about that. I might just use the black. I think it's a little bit more. This is more of a zipper for a pocket, I think, color-wise. That's my personal, personal thought. I'm going to use the black one. So with the traditional zipper, saying to use a 10 inch and I have an 11 inch I think let me check from here to here so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so I could shorten it if I needed to yeah I'm going to need to so basically what that means is as I'm just going to come up here and stitch across um, the teeth and then trim it, and that will become my new zipper stop. And I think that's where I'm going to end off today. Um, I've got to run to Everett, and um, we when when I come back, we're we're going to be putting a zipper in. We are going to be putting the top onto the lining, I believe center one zipper tape over the top of the seam line and do that and then yes so we're gonna we're that's exactly what we're going to do so we're gonna get the zipper installed into these two top pieces then we're going to attach those to our um, front and back lining section and then um, there's some some matching up that we need to do and then we're going to do that side piece and then we're going to put um, the, the side piece onto the lining and then we're going to go and put in our top with the zipper is recessed. So the top of the bag will be here and the top where the zipper is will be down inside, um, which kind of makes it a nice bag. And then we've, we've got a piece that we're gonna make some binding which is an amazing way to finish off the top of the bag. It just makes it so simple and so easy and very, very cute. And I think that's what I'm going to use, that white fabric with the little B print. That will be the very top part of the bag. And then we'll be all done. So um, I know that this video series is not going to be uploaded in time for Easter, but I hope everyone enjoyed their day and were able to um, do what they'd like on, a, on a, a nice little spring day in April. I'm looking forward to May. My cherry tree is about to bloom. 
which I always look forward to. So um, leave the comments below. I will read them. If you want to check out my Facebook page, that is Laurie's Heirloom page on Facebook. I will try to remember to link it below. And um, I, I hope to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching and bearing with me as I traverse this camera nightmare. See you soon.